Another change, because we are going from one World Cup to the other, Michel Platini has been uh, nominated uh, chairman of uh, the Org FIFA's organizing committee for the World Cup 2018 in Russia. What has been uh, relevant decisions we have made uh, during this week when we had uh, 11 different committees with 125 different nationalities. The members of these different committees, 125 different nationalities. Uh, today, or yesterday, the executive committee took a very important decision concerning the TPO. Uh, TPO, it means third party ownership of players' economic rights, abbreviation TPO. And the executive committee, you will remember that this item was already presented at the Congress in Sao Paulo. Then a working group has presented a report. And now we took the decision, firm decision, that TPO should be banned. But it cannot be banned immediately. There will be a transitional period, and this working group under the chairmanship of Jeffrey Thompson is working on that. That's very important. You know that. We have had a decision on problems affecting the health of players. And especially, we have established a protocol by the FIFA Medical Committee how to manage concussions. And this is a very, very, very important part, as actually we are facing also a, a case by lawyers from the uh, USA, they are putting into question the good or the bad of our game when it can produce headaches or concussions. The uh, medical committee also gave us guidelines concerning this terrible <coughs> Ebola epidemic in, uh, in Africa, especially affecting three country, countries, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Just for your information or to recall that in, uh, in Liberia, the capital, Monrovia, we have put at disposal the football stadium. We have installed that two units, medical units, can be now on this stadium to try to help to fight against this uh, epidemic. Also, together with the World Health Organization and the United Nations, we are working together. We have given some money to the federations which are touched, but it's not money that what they need. What they need is really medication against uh, this uh, terrible illness. In the medical part also, we have uh, taken note of uh, the new VADA code that will enter into the, uh, in, on the 1st of uh, January 2015, and uh, FIFA being part of WADA, then uh, you know that uh, the uh, suspension of a very, let's say, very serious cases of uh, 
doping will now go from two years to a four years ban. But it is really for cheating with serious doping substances. We have also installed for uh, Brazil a FIFA legacy fund of 100 million US dollars. We have already used 20 million dollars during the with naturally activities in Brazil, so 80 million are still available. It's the same amount that we have had for the World Cup in. Uh, in Africa. The development programs in FIFA, they have been given $100 million more as foreseen in the next uh, budget. And what is uh, very important is that the, uh, the value of a gold project is now going from uh, $500,000 to $600,000, one gold project. Remember, when we started, it was $400,000. $400, the executive committee has also decided, or had to decide, that the Football Association of Gibraltar and the Football Association of the Northern Mariana Islands cannot be accepted as a member of FIFA according to Article 10 of the FIFA statutes. And you can have a look why. Because the applicant must organize and supervise football in one country being an independent state according to the definition in the FIFA statutes and only one association shall be recognized on each country. Uh, FIFA has uh, also agreed, the Executive Committee, for an exceptional big tournament that will be played in 2016. It's the 100 years of uh, the, um, the CONMEBOL, 100 years. It was the first confederation in uh, FIFA, South America, and uh, they will play a tournament, an international tournament, naturally, in the, in the USA together with CONCACAF, CONMEBOL CONCACAF, and it will be in parallel, at least some time, in parallel with uh, the European Championship in 2016, which are in France. And this competition will also go now on the international calendar uh, for the release of the players. Then uh, something which, uh, which is uh, directly linked uh, to my person. Uh, the uh, executive committee has uh, accepted or uh, adopted the electoral regulations for the FIFA presidency. And at the end, end of the meeting uh, this morning, or noon, it was 12.30, I have then announced uh, to the executive committee, because I wanted to do that with respect to our executive committee, that I will uh, accept, let's say, demands and pleas of different associations and confederations to serve FIFA for a fifth mandate if ever and when the national associations uh, would, be, uh, would be enough, would say uh, happy with me to be elected on the 29th of May next year here in Zurich. But in the meantime, and this I just wanted to repeat also, and I repeat it uh, during the week, I am the president of the whole FIFA until this 29th. 
and the elections are only on the 29th, and then it's another period. But I'm still the president, remaining the president. Voila. I'm sure you are awaiting uh, something very important uh, concerning the demand which has been in the media and even proposed by the chair uh, of uh, the Ethics Committee himself, Mr. Garcia, to, to publish a report. I am not speaking on this matter because it is a, really a matter of the Ethics Committee and it is a, a, legal, a legal matter. Therefore, I have asked, and he did it also in the Executive Committee, I have asked our chief lawyer, Mr. Marco Villiger, uh, to inform you and to explain the procedure. You have the floor, Mr. Pellegrino. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. And just to make one thing clear from the beginning, I don't speak on, the, on behalf of the Ethics Committee. I speak on behalf of the Code of Ethics, because this is the document according to which uh, the investigation is led. But first, let's uh, take a look back. The Code of Ethics is a result of the reform process uh, of which uh, FIFA went through the Code of Ethics was approved by uh, the FIFA Executive Committee, but also by the IGC. The IGC at the time approved the code article by article, and FIFA was also publicly praised for this revol revolutionary code of uh, ethics with two chambers, with a complete independence of these two chambers. The code of ethics is, of course, based on certain uh, principles of law, as you can expect it. Uh, one principle which is crucial is the principle of confidentiality. Cooperation between witnesses and the ethics committee is based on confidentiality and this is also enshrined in the code. If not, perhaps certain witnesses, whistleblowers or other parties might not cooperate to the, with the same extent if such cooperation on the confidentiality is not guaranteed. But let's have a look at the concrete cases here. Again, I cannot give you any details about the concrete case and the report because we, FIFA administration, we do not have a copy of the report. We do not know what is in the report. What I can tell you is the procedure. Mr. Garcia, who is uh, completely independent to decide if he opens investigations or preliminary investigations, decided to open a preliminary investigation on the bidding process around the World Cup 2018 and 2022. He also his statement that he uh, heard more than 75 witnesses and he handed in his report to the adjudicatory chamber, Judge Eckert and Ellen Sullivan, in order to analyze it. Also there, the cooperation with the witnesses, which uh, Michael Garcia heard, was of course based on the principle of confidentiality. So this report is now with the adjudicatory chamber. The adjudicatory chamber also made a statement and they stated that they will analyze the report and give a public statement probably beginning of, no of November. What can we expect from this uh, public statement? We certainly cannot expect decisions against individuals because this is something which Michael Garcia can decide if he, as a result of the preliminary investigation, will open cases against individuals. He, of course, can do so. This is in his full discretion as he is an independent chairman. So whenever he sees that an individual based on the preliminary investigation which he did violate the, the code of ethics, he can charge this person. He can charge this person and also here transfer this report to the adjudicatory chamber in order that they can take a decision on this subject, on this natural person. The decision from the adjudicatory chamber on these possible cases will then, final decisions will be made public. So what we expect from the uh, report from Judge Eckert is that uh, he will, as he publicly stated, analyze 
if there is something which uh, he would be interested to have uh, in addition to uh, the report which was handed in. But for us, it is also important to receive some guidance on future bidding regulations. As Michael Garcia indicated, he made certain recommendations on future bidding regulations. And uh, we are looking forward to the public statement of the adjudicatory chamber that we can take into account these um, recommendations for future bidding regulations. I think and I hope that I could add some clarity and shed some light in the confusion which was uh, uh, in the media in the certain weeks, but this is the procedure. So in, in a nutshell, preliminary investigation from Garcia was handed over to the adjudicatory chamber. Mr. Garcia can decide if he wants to open individual cases which then also will be transferred to the adjudicatory chamber to decide and take the necessary action. This is a short summary of the procedures and I give the floor back to the FIFA president. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Marco. So uh, I open the floor. If you have any questions uh, related to what, uh, sorry, to what Marco just said, then uh, you're free to ask him. Otherwise, uh, the president or the secretary general are here to answer questions. Once again, as always, just one question in order to give the chance to everybody to ask a question and not start the monologue. So please uh, raise your hand, tell us who you are and who you're working for, and, uh, and then we start. Graham, please. Hi, um, Graham Dunbar from the Associated Press. A question about the ethics code and and Mr. Garcia's request this week. I think those of us who were here last Friday and heard Mr. Garcia and Mr. Eckert understood the procedure, but since then there's been a very clear request from Mr. Garcia um, that he understands the ethics code that was passed by your executive committee before he took office, and he very clearly looked towards you to have a discussion in the last two days to agree on relaxing the uh, confidentiality rules, which is something which seems to be within your power. What kind of discussion um, was there uh, in the last two days? Was it an open discussion? Was there a, a clear request to relax the secrecy rules? And what was your guidance and what was your message to your executive committee? I suppose the uh, question is for me. I suppose. Okay, uh, listen. Uh, the, uh, the only contact uh, that we have had uh, with uh, the president or the chair of the investigatory chamber uh, was his uh, press releases that we have received in FIFA. But we have not received, or at least the FIFA president or the FIFA general secretariat, any demands or requests uh, from Mr. Garcia to speak with us or to ask uh, that uh, we should make a decision on uh, the, uh, this, uh, this report and to publish this report and to change what you said, the confidentiality, which is in the, uh, in the uh, uh, ethical code, et the code of ethics of FIFA. And therefore, the discussion we have had today is exactly the resume of this discussion has been presented now uh, by, uh, by Marco Williger, but we haven't had any contact, uh, direct contact, uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, Garcia. I, I understand that, but um, some of your ex executive committee members have been quite clear in the last few days of agreeing with Mr. Garcia, and it seemed they would bring this subject directly to you in the meeting yesterday and today. So what kind of request came from them and how was it dealt with? Well, listen, uh, most of the requests uh, coming for the publication of this report uh, were people, they were not there on the 2nd of December when the decision was taken for the World Cups 2018 and 2022. And uh, today in the meeting, uh, there was uh, not any longer any request from any of these members in uh, FIFA to publish this report. Uh, yes, Lee, please. Uh, 
Mr Blatter, Lee Wellings of Al Jazeera, we're hearing increasingly from members of the Executive Committee that they do want this published. This is FIFA's image as much as for the good of football, for the good of everyone. Um, what's your personal opinion? Do you want to see, ultimately, transparency? Do you want these details published as much as they can be, notwithstanding confidentiality of witnesses? Absolutely, absolutely we are, and it's not only from today. Uh, we started specifically in 2011 uh, for transparency uh, with uh, our new um, committees we have installed. But on the other hand, we are bound by the regulations which have been accepted. And as explained uh, by Marco Villiger, in this regulation it is said that the report of the uh, investigatory chamber first has to go uh, to the um, adjudicatory chamber. And uh, we know now that at the beginning of November they will be ready uh, to report or to give a report. And so we had just one month to wait. Just to tell you, they have promised us this report at the beginning, of, uh, before the World Cup, and then at the end of the World Cup. It was not done. So now we are, uh, we are in a delay but the delay more for 30 days will not change anything and we will also be uh, uh, in accordance of our regulations uh, in, the, in the matter of ethics committees procedures. And secondly, this will not change anything of our wish and will uh, to be transparent. And it will be in one month or five weeks uh, if we say that uh, September is still uh, one week going. Dan, please. Um, Mr. President, the, uh, Dan Rowan, BBC News. The controversy over the watches that were given as gifts by the Brazilian Football Association in which yourself and members of your committee accepted and have now got to hand back, is that something which you regret? Was it a mistake? And have you given your watch back yet? Listen, this, uh, this problem of, uh, of, of the watches is uh, finally a non-problem. It's a non-problem because it was a gift that the Football Association, or the CBF, that is uh, the Confederación Brasileira de Futebol, at the occasion of their 100 years, and after having been five times World Cup champion, and organizing now the World Cup, they had the good intention to give a gift to the members of the executive committee, to the 32 participants in the World Cup, and to the presidents of the 10 associations in Gonmebol. What is wrong there? Wrong may be that according uh, to the uh, Code of Ethics, um, perhaps, the value, but what is a value? And today, again, it is more what Brazil has said, it is a sentimental value. Okay, but in my opinion, this matter should have gone to the Committee of Compliance and to ask the Compliance Committee if such a gift is permitted. Because speaking about corruption, that's totally wrong because Brazil has already obtained everything they wanted to have and they wanted to give a gift. And then you say they have given a gift. No, they have not given a gift. It was packed in a, in a baggage, in a luggage they have given to everybody. So some of the people, they haven't even opened this baggage or this luggage. So therefore now, because members of our executive committee have disclosed this matter to the ethics committee and then the ethics committee came in. But the ethics committee has not opened any, um, I would say, any case against the members and has only said, please bring back or give back these watches. So I think it's really a non-case and it has shown also with the other watches, which is the, the Ublo watches, uh, that we have not distributed, that uh, our, uh, the ethics committee or the compliance committee are working well. Yes, in the back, please.
sorry about that. We always make a lot of noise, Mr. Blatter, I'm very sorry. My name is Hans-Jürgen Mauros from Südwestrundfunk ARD Studio Zürich. Um, in English, it's uh, German National Public Radio. I would like to ask you what drives you personally again to run for a fifth time. You are Mr. FIFA, you have been it for decades. You are the Pope of football, so to speak. Um, what makes you going? I'm sure it's not the money. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, your fair approach. Um, what makes me running? First of all, I'm not running, but I'm at disposal. I have not finished. A mission is never finished. Never. And now you see that we are not at the end of our reform. We can see it in the problems. They are still pending with the Ethics Committee. This is the one part. The other part is that I have been contacted and I have been, well, uh, I would say asked uh, just before the Congress in, uh, in uh, Sao Paulo by five of the six confederation uh, by, by standing uh, demands for not saying ovation, please stay, be our president, because at that time at least, they say we have no other candidate. So I declare to, uh, today that I am at disposal by the, because finally, what is FIFA? FIFA is a serving company, a serving company uh, for our society. If you go into the statutes of FIFA, then you will read what are the objectives of FIFA. The objectives of FIFA are to develop, to develop the football, to develop the football around the world, to take into consideration the unifying educational, cultural, humanitarian values of the football, and then to develop it particularly through youth and development programs. This is Virata service. This is your development. And the second part are the competitions. Because if you develop football, you have to play. And these are the international competitions by FIFA, the national competitions. And this gives uh, to the world all these emotions. And uh, OK, then you have uh, to have regulations and to control it. But we are a service, and I am still at the service. And as I have said at the very beginning, if on the 29th uh, of uh, the, uh, May uh, next year, and I am still in good condition, we, I don't know. We are not masters of our destiny. Uh, now I feel well, uh, perhaps in a few months. Who knows? We don't know. But if I still feel well, and if they want me, they want me. I'm at disposal because I want to go on serving football. Thank you. Then the lady in uh, Dutch orange, please. Mr. President, Amanda Davis from uh, CNN. Uh, back to the Garcia report. If the will is there to publish, if the need for transparency is, is understood, could you just let us know what room for maneuver is there in terms of the code of ethics and the confidentiality clauses? What are the options if a decision was, be made, to, was made to make something public? <laughs> we will, do you want to answer? Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, do it. It is, uh, I mean, the, yeah. the answer can be found in the media release from Michael Garcia, where he says that uh, it is now up to the adjudicatory chamber will now make a final decision on the report and supplementary reports, including publication. So it is now with the adjudicatory chamber to decide about the report they received from um, Michael Garcia. It is not up to the executive committee to decide if the confidentiality 
of witnesses which was which were which was guaranteed to 75 witnesses will be lifted this would be completely against the code and if everyone is always asking for the independence of the ethics committee i don't understand the question that it shall be now the executive committee who shall be in charge to lift the guaranteed uh, confidentiality to the witnesses Microphone, please. Judge Eckert clearly said that he will analyze the report of Michael Garcia and make a public statement beginning of November. What will be in this statement? I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. This is a question you would have to address to Judge Eckert. Next here, please. Yes. Yeah. You're together, right? Okay. Uh, Martin. Martín Fernández de Globo Brasil, que usted dijo que la decisión firme. You said that you took a firm decision on uh, third uh, parties. Uh, do you have a deadline uh, on TPO uh, with respect to this ban on third party ownership, TPO, and so forth? Uh, is there also a decision with respect uh, to the Club World Cup 2016 2018? 2017, 2018. I have given the principle of this decision that uh, we have taken today concerning this TPO. Uh, and uh, I understand uh, your, uh, your questions uh, because it is something which is uh, specifically touching uh, the Americas, especially South America, uh, concerning the, um, the time frame that we have at disposal because I said that uh, we, need, uh, we need some time. Um, I asked the Secretary General, what is your view? When can we expect to be in a final decision by the Congress? You, please help me. I mean, there was a meeting where all the um, football, uh, let's say, representatives uh, were present, and a number of uh, discussions took place, and it was clear that there was no agreement between all the parties. But at the end, it was also clear that the only one way to fight against third-party ownership is just to uh, put in place a ban. It was also clear that the ban cannot be implemented as the financial fair play immediately. And we are discussing about the number of transfer windows we have to uh, keep in order for this ban to be implemented. So are we talking about six, meaning three years, or eight, meaning four years. That's the, 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 the discussion which will take place in the next week at FIFA with this working group. And we hope that by the next executive committee uh, in December in Marrakesh, uh, the uh, term uh, to uh, implement this uh, ban uh, would be uh, precise and given to the executive committee for final decision. At the latest, it will be in March. But again, the decision is that a ban will be implemented uh, when it is a question of three or four years, I would say, uh, but that's a discussion. Until the next World Cup. It's four, four years until the next World Cup. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's clear that we need time, as again, the financial fair play needs time to be implemented and to be uh, successful. Brian? <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Platter, Brian, Brian Homer from Reuters. Uh, Mr. Champagne has uh, said that he would like to take part in a public debate with you about the structural problems facing football. Would, would you be prepared to take part in such a debate? You know, we have now uh, so-called uh, electoral regulations, and uh, we don't know uh, how many candidates uh, we will have uh, uh, after the uh, uh, 29th of January next year, uh, and uh, the, because this is the deadline, and then uh, depending how many we are, uh, I don't know how you can organize uh, uh, public uh, uh, discussions, but we are not in politics, we are in sport, and uh, we shall not imitate all what is done in uh, in politics. I tried to do that in 1998, and then they all refused to speak with me at that time. I never, I never refused to speak with somebody, but I don't think that a, a public debate uh, is, uh, when a debate, 
then in a Congress, where the Congressists are there, the, those they are voting, that this would be a debate. Okay, last uh, two questions. Yeah? No, first uh, Kier and then uh, Richard. Uh, Kier Radnage, World of Soccer. It's a question for Mr. Valk. Actually, in um, re your review of the, the World Cup, which was a great success, I wondered whether with the benefit of hindsight, any consideration had been given, is being given, or will be given, to whether the company contracted to run hospitality, uh, it's sensible for it to be a sister company of the company running ticketing. Thank you. Thank you again. I'm uh, so happy to be the president of FIFA and not involved in these uh, ticketing matters. And this is uh, the uh, really l'apanage de Monsieur uh, le Secrétaire Général. And please give the answers. Uh, firstly, I want to say that the, the work which has been delivered by Match Hospitality as by Match with running our ticketing uh, operation has been, uh, uh, have been uh, perfect work. I mean, it has been remarkable what they have been uh, doing during the World Cup 2014 when we know how difficult it has been in 2010 uh, talking about hospitality uh, and where they faced quite a high amount of losses in 2010. So um, when you are working, it's not because someone uh, has done something and it seems that, uh, I mean, this person has been released and now uh, even, I mean, it seems that uh, they are talking about uh, uh, looking if really there are charges against him and against other people. Uh, as long as uh, there, is no, um, there is no case, there is no judgment, uh, there is no reason for us not to work with a company which again has done a, a very good job. And uh, if we will extend the agreement with much, there is no reason not to do it. I mean, it will be uh, a decision based on um, also some commercial value, financial aspects, and then uh, decided and confirmed by the Finance Committee and the Executive Committee. But on my side, as the, um, let's say, head of administration of FIFA, I would have no problem to extend with much hospitality considering the work they have done. Thank you. And last one, Richard, over there, please. Uh, Richard Conway from uh, BBC Radio 5 Live. A uh, question for Mr. Blatter. Mr. Blatter, just back on the subject of watches, can you just confirm if you have returned the watch or if you plan to do so? And are you now saying that on the subject of what trivial value is, according to the FIFA Code of Ethics, the bar is now set at $25,000 as the, code of, as the uh, Ethics Commission def uh, gave the value of the watch as? Uh, concerning uh, the uh, first uh, question, uh, I have already, already given the information on the watches, so I don't come back on that. And to the second one, we cannot put a value, we cannot put a value in the Code of Ethics. What I want is that the uh, committee, the compliance committee, uh, should give us guidelines when it comes uh, to um, let's say gifts, they are exchanged in football. You know, when uh, uh, there is an international match, uh, then a delegation from the team A will invite the delegation to team B, and they are together at noon time or the day before. They always exchange uh, values, what values may be, and on, on what. And then if there are, if there are uh, 100 years, 125 years. There was in Great Britain, in, in England, the 150th anniversary of, uh, of, of the FA. And they have given gifts. But, so what is, what is permitted or not permitted? And here we need guidelines, not from the committee, from the ethics committee, but guidelines from the committee of conformity or the compliance committee. This we want to have in order that we can, we can say what is the, the, the value. But there is no value here. There is no value. It is only said that it shall not, uh, it, it shall not be whatever uh, uh, too much or, or uh, 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 huh? trivial, trivial value. Trivial, trivial value. Voilà. Uh, trivial value. Voilà. That's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your interest. Uh, thank you for your ongoing interest. Uh, to uh, the football, I give back the floor uh, to the chief operating officer for uh, 
the uh, communication. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as always, you will have a, <laughs> you will have the, a press release, uh, further information, and as always, uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you are more than happy to ask uh, my media department. Thanks for coming, and then have a nice uh, travel back. Thank you.